Hi, Tony here. I just wanted to um, uh, give a demo of uh, an instrument I've been working on recently, um, testing out some uh, new Air Manager 3.3 uh, um, API functions uh, for Canvas drawing. So this is a little instrument I put together um, to test some of the functions. It's a three and a eighth inch um, standard um, circular hole instrument panel fit um, PFD. Um, and it basically demonstrates a lots lots of the different functions for the um, for the canvas drawing tools. Let's get uh, started by powering it up. So you can see it just starts by running a little test uh, sequence um, of by rolling the tapes until they settle to the um, right um, values for what they actually are. And so it's, you can see it, it's a traditional. Um, IH type display, um, unlike many other uh, electronic standby instruments, has um, the functions of uh, airspeed and altitude along the uh, appropriate sides that you'd expect them to be as per a standard uh, six pack with um, obviously altitude on the right and airspeed on the left. And then underneath the um, IH display, um, your heading. And so there's a rolling tape for the heading and a little box there with the actual heading uh, number in it. So, first of all, before we uh, we go flying, uh, and and so you can see the, th the 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 gauge in action, just want to point out a couple of things with the uh, with the menu. So this thing is, is as I said, it was uh, um, or did I say I can't remember? Um, it's a touch screen um, LCD, and so essentially, what we're doing or or what we use that for is to access the menu. Uh, system and for setting um, things like the barrow and uh, there's a um, low airspeed warning uh, system alarm that you can also set using areas of the touch screen as sort of invisible buttons if you like. So let's start by um, accessing the menu to begin with. So the menu button is accessed um, here with with an invisible middle button here. So there's kind of like six buttons. There's, so there's, there's one here corresponding to what appears in this box up the top here. Another one here I've said about the middle one and then the same on the other side, uh, a top, middle and, and bottom. And so we start the menu just by touching on that invisible um, buttons. Now, I'm not running with a touch screen here, but obviously if you had a touch screen, uh, uh, that would uh, you know just make it that much more realistic. Um, so I'm just using a mouse uh, for the purposes of this demonstration. So I've just opened the menu here and you can see now these graphics have changed to an and a term with a grey background, a plus and a minus. This is VS, um, and the display, obviously, the def default display that was there previously was was um, um, was for the altitude tape. Now that just basically tells us that we're currently selected as knots, because obviously that's been overwritten by this plus and minus here. And there's a uh, a next. So these are corresponding to the buttons in the four corners here in terms of what the what the functions are. So they're basically saying. Um, that's VS. So if we select um, plus on VS, we can see that we can toggle it to KPH, and then again we go to miles per hour, and there aren't any more. So the three choices are knots, KPH, and miles per hour. I use the uh, down button to toggle button. We're going to leave it on knots because that's the most convention. Um, and then we press next. And we toggle through to the altitude. So you see now that it's changed to feet. That's our currently selected uh, unit. And again, we have the plus or minus and alt. So we can go to meters is the only choice we have there. Back to feet again. Most convention is to have that. Uh, and then the last one that we have here is um, a choice of barrow unit. So there's about four different units you can have uh, for these. I've currently got it uh, set to millibars, as you can see, but you can have uh, mi millimeters of mercury. There's the millibars again, H uh, hectopascals, and inches of mercury, um, the standard units for the uh, North America. So I'm going to leave it on millibars because that's uh, what I prefer. And and if you just press next again, then you just toggle around those things, and you and you can just keep toggling around, changing those as you as you wish. And when you're ready to uh, exit, you just press the menu button again, and it exits and leaves the settings on uh, where, wherever you want. And it's important to note that when you quit the instrument and then you open Air Manager or your computer again, it saves those uh, memory. Uh, 
or, or it has a memory of uh, what you previously state that you've left it in. So we're using pers uh, persistence for that to um, to store those states. Okay, one other little thing then again before we get into the basic operation of the instrument is um, the setting of the barrow. We use the button down here, here you can see next to the uh, actual barrow, current barrow setting itself and it's similar to the to the menu in so much as you flick that once, it is only the one, there is no next to, to toggle on, it's literally just these two settings. Now if I don't touch any of those buttons within uh, 10 seconds I think it is, uh, it will just time out and give you back to the normal thing so you press it again now if I touch um, these areas you can see now that in the in the normal sense it's adjusting the millibar figure by one each time I click that and then down the other way so we're gonna just set a zero was close to zero altitude there we go and then now because I've touched them um, they're, they're gonna time out a little bit quicker all this is modelled on the real instrument, so the timings and um, where the buttons are located are as close to the real instrument as possible. One or two things are not exactly the same because um, uh, they have things like where you have to push two buttons at the same time and that's not uh, possible as it stands uh, with uh, Air Manager. Okay, so on to um, the tapes. Um, again, I spoke about the, the, the standard representation of the uh, altitude, uh, airspeed and uh, heading tapes. Let's see if we can sort of get those into operation. I have the sim uh, running here, so um, let's um, see if we can um, fire it up and uh, get ourselves uh, underway. Okay, so we're just taxiing onto the runway here and you can just see the heading. I'm just purposefully uh, steering left and right here. You can see the heading rolling take there, rolling uh, round. And then we'll just wind the power in slowly. And you can see the airspeed beginning to come alive. And And there we go, we're able. So just um, so I don't have to struggle with my opposite hand, which is what I'm doing at the moment, I'm going to engage the autopilot. Um, so I've just select selected a, a heading hold and a 500 uh, f feet, for, uh, feet per minute climb and so the uh, aeroplane's just sorting itself out of that. so while it's doing that we'll just have a quick talk about the um, the coloured airspeed tapes here these are based on the v-speeds uh, from the x-plane sim and so there's no uh, having to uh, reprogram or get those values or enter those values it takes them directly from the sim in terms of the v-speeds and then automatically draws the corresponding colored um, v-speed bars up the side of the uh, airspeed indicator so we'll see if we can go a bit faster and slower in a minute I think you may have seen the the, the, uh, the white bar as as we came through um, and the airspeed wound up so there you see we've leveled off now on the on the heading and um, we're in a steady 500 uh, feet per minute climb. Now this is not a traditional AH, um, so this um, is based on um, similar to uh, well not similar to it's the same as a VSI. So essentially this is this is um, how our our VSI here. This is the 500 feet per minute mark. This is a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand, and the same obviously for the for the descent uh, so it's not a true pitch um, display that's because that's how the real instrument also um, shows um, the uh, depiction of the AH or uses um, um, the um, vertical speed as, as a way of uh, showing a, a change of pitch um, 
also uh, on the um, the main display there in the in the center we have um, the white um, roll, roll markers here um, and a slip skid let's give it a, a little bit of there we go Whew. a slip skid uh, bar there representing um, the yaw and then these uh, little red markers here with the, with this the center pointer here are standard rate turn markers but they're dynamic so they basically uh, rotate around this arc um, depending on what speed um, you're you're flying along at so they may uh, they may narrow or widen uh, as your speed adjusts accordingly um, I suppose that's 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 the main instrument really um, it uh, it's important to say that every single feature that you see here other than other than the bezel and the um, the surround here with the screws has been drawn using the canvas tools the text is not because there is not a text item on the canvas the text is the standard um, text feature um, that we've had in air manager for a while however it has been recently uh, updated with things like uh, opacity so that um, you can do dimming um, for the for the um, for the text and also um, it there uh, there's a new um, introduction very recently uh, that is enabled you to shift the rotate point for the text now this is very important for the VSI display that I'm using in this instrument because it enabled me to um, essentially shift the rotate point for these ones and twos uh, which are standard text uh, objects uh, down to somewhere sort of like the center of the instrument so as I rotate the graphical lines the text objects rotate around this central point rather than rotating around the corner of their box if that makes sense so that it gets all out of sync which is what I originally had and it obviously looked silly and and not very useful so I originally had a graphic in there but I've since changed the code again um, just to um, prove that um, that works very well and it does it works as you can probably see um, throw this around a little bit um, very well indeed so just a, a quick demonstration of uh, what's possible with the canvas drawing tools again for this type of instrument you you could probably do a lot of this with uh, PNG um, images you don't necessarily have to use the canvas drawing tools but I just wanted to use uh, you know uh, a basic instrument um, as, a, as a way of proving and seeing what was possible with the canvas drawing tools and I'm sure um, we'll carry on developing uh, the possibilities of what we're going to use that for navigation displays traffic displays that sort of thing um, and maybe some overlays for the, the maps who knows what uh, the imagination of uh, people will come up with in terms of the uses for the canvas tool but certainly uh, very powerful and very useful thank you for your time hope you enjoyed the video see you again soon bye